production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, supporting arts, advancing culture, and connecting the community to artists, events, and classes at columbusmakesart.com. From these contributing sponsors and viewers like you, thank you. This time on Broad and High. Discover how some local middle schoolers use their voice to share their stories on some big issue topics. About how people treat us kids, they underestimate us. So I wanted to put some of those ideas into the song. And Kate's Quick Bites is back. This time I'm whipping up a mouthwatering Creole shrimp recipe submitted by Amber Nicole of Mojo Flow. This and more right now on Broad and High. Hi everyone, welcome to Broad and High. I'm your host, Kate Quickle. WAVE, spelled W-A-V, is short for We Amplify Voices. It's a nonprofit educational program that pairs middle school students with experienced musicians to create professionally recorded songs. Well, after spending the summer working together mostly through Zoom workshops, they released a new album titled Stay Safe. The project gave these young musicians a platform on which to share their experiences about some big issue topics from the pandemic to the Black Lives Matter movement. Here's more. Uh, Stay Safe uh, is a collection of 12 songs that were written during the spring and summer of COVID. And they were written with over 100 kids all over the city of Columbus. Now we need power, now we need power. You know how this game go? Trying to make it go right, trying to make uh. it go right. Like we playing Fortnite. Like we playing Wave Fortnite. is a social emotional learning program, um, but we have a musical output. So the whole point of our workshops are this conversation that happens with the people in the group, and then they collaborate with creative professionals, music producers, videographers, visual artists to create a radio quality song a music video, and a piece of artwork out of those conversations. How's everybody doing today? A big part of our workshops was uh, the kids would go to a recording studio and get to see their song recorded by the musicians and to get to really like hands-on produce the song in the studio. We tried a Zoom workshop where we had three students and it went really well. So we were like, okay, this is, this is possible. We can have like recording sessions where the producer and the musicians are each in their home studios and they're Zooming with the kids and it still feels like a, you know, authentic uh, learning experience. What would you tell someone who is feeling down to help them feel better? We'll start off by talking about what kind of music we like and that's kind of the, the common ground. And then we'll move into a conversation about a theme. What do we want our song to be about. We've got so much. We've got cops, we've got COVID-19, we've got Black Lives Matter, we've got bullying, we've got change, we've got authority. And I feel like that's too much to put all of that in the song. I feel like we should narrow it down. The producers, especially uh, Cassius Keys, just did an amazing job of kind of like helping them think through that and process uh, what they were feeling and turned it into just some really powerful songs. How I kind of do it is uh, we listen to their favorite songs and then it'll be like, what do you like about that song? Well, I like that, you know, their story, their storytelling. I like that he's talking about his life and I'm like, oh yeah, so you can relate to that. Yeah, you know, he goes through some of the same things I'm going through. Word, what kind of things are you going through? And then before you know it, they're spilling out their whole soul. They don't even realize what's going on, but we are now in therapy. <laughs> and it's like, it's beautiful. It's beautiful at that point because it just becomes them, right? Like it's. It's hard to get a raw voice from a child, if that makes sense. So it's beautiful when you can get them to actually speak on it. And it just takes bringing their walls down. And the easiest way to do that is with music. It doesn't matter how old you are, this, this moment has done the same thing to everyone. And those aren't just the questions that adults are wondering. Kids are having those same questions and they're trying to process them in the same way. So um, I, I thought there was just a lot of wisdom in the songs that, that is really worth listening to. Facing my problems will run away. Brown skin girl, I 
up, you know your beauty And that you love truly Black boy, I hope you know that you can fly Your limits don't ever stop at the sky I'm 14 and I go to Wedgwood Middle School. Um, this um, quarantine, we did We Are Warriors. We are warriors. Can you see, can you believe everything we're up against? The weight we bear, armor we wear in our own defense. Some of the ideas were to make it evolved around what's going on in the community and about how people treat us kids, they underestimate us. So I wanted to put some of those ideas into the song. And so we had the lyrics and we made a beat and it was like that. I thought some of these songs just were really profound and the things that the kids had to say. The interesting thing, and I think one of the biggest takeaways is the fact that they are way more intelligent than we think. They're seeing the protests. They're seeing the racism. They're seeing unarmed black people getting killed every day. And they're internalizing this information. So Stay Safe is a peek into that. And hopefully with the continuation of this emotional releasing process, we can further the next generation. Learn more about WAVE at weamplifyvoices.org. And you can find the whole Stay Safe album on iTunes or Spotify. Kate's Quick Bites is back, and we've added a twist. We've asked local artists and arts administrators to share some of their favorite recipes with us for some culinary conversations. First up today is a winner that comes to us from Amber Nicole, the front woman from Columbus-based funk band Mojo Flow. The band has a standing gig in New Orleans during Mardi Gras, which they missed out on this year due to COVID. But Amber says this barbecue shrimp recipe is her go-to when she's craving some comforting Creole cuisine. Mm, lemon and garlic, such a good smell. Okay, so Amber Nicole from Mojo Flow submitted this recipe for us to try. It's Mr. B's barbecue shrimp. Mr. B's is a restaurant in the French Quarter in New Orleans where she loves to go. Well, this recipe, it's such a great Creole recipe. Tell me more about your time in New Orleans and your connection and your love for that cuisine. Well, Mojo Flow has had a standing Mardi Gras gig in New Orleans for more years than I can even count at this point. Yearly, we are in New Orleans, and so this is the first year that we haven't been there, and it's it's just wild. So of course, um, once I kind of realized that we weren't gonna be there, I was like, I need this taste, I need this food. So I just did a really quick Google and just looked up a barbecued shrimp. It's something that it's just, all the food down there is delicious. I mean, you can get, chicken from a gas station, and we had joked about this, but chicken from a gas station in New Orleans is like... Better than anything. So <laughs> Okay, you can't have Creole shrimp without a Creole seasoning mix, so that's what we're gonna put together now. There's a lot of spices involved, but we're gonna make about two cups of this, and you can store it in an airtight container and you can use it for other recipes, so it's a good investment. So this is three quarters of a cup of paprika, and I'm gonna add black pepper. I'm gonna add some kosher salt, some dried thyme, a little bit of dried oregano. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of dried basil, some granulated onion, and now we're gonna add the granulated garlic. And finally, some cayenne pepper for some heat. So that's our spice blend, our Creole spice blend for the shrimp, and I'm just gonna whisk it up. So the recipe calls for like several different kinds of pepper. I mean, there's cayenne, there's ground pepper, there's cracked pepper. Do you think, I mean, obviously that affects the heat level. Do you kind of mess with that or do you like it the way it is? I love it the way it is. And my my mother uh, would always cook, you know, she cooked dinners and she would say, oops, I was heavy handed on the pepper. So I grew up having heavy handed pepper dishes all the time and just, mm -hmm. it never bothered me. Um, you know, me and my husband love spicy food and hot food. So it's it was perfect for me. And it's just so comforting. Yeah, it agreed. It tastes like New Orleans to me. So 
We've already mixed together our Creole seasoning. This makes a lot. You can use this for other recipes. We just need a couple teaspoons for this recipe. So I'm going to walk myself through this recipe. I've never made it before, but I'm really excited. Um, we're going to add our shrimp to the skillet. Here we go. Look at this big, beautiful shrimp. So we've got half a cup of Worcestershire sauce going on top of our shrimp. Let's see. Next, we're adding lemon juice. So this is two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. So the recipe calls for about two teaspoons of seasoning. Amber likes to add a little bit more, so whatever you're feeling, add that much of the seasoning. So we'll do like two heaping teaspoons. And then we're gonna add two different kinds of black pepper, freshly ground black pepper and cracked black pepper. All right, last thing to add right now is our garlic. We've got about a teaspoon of freshly minced garlic. And we're gonna cook for about a minute until the shrimp turn pink. You don't want to overcook or they'll get kind of tough. So I'm going to mix this up. Don't worry, we haven't added the butter yet. It's going to get better. We can't make it all the time because I'll just be eating butter poached shrimp. Um, I was going to say, on that note, let's talk about the butter. <laughs> there's, there's three sticks of butter, but it, it doesn't come off as heavy or greasy like it works well. Right. Exactly, exactly. I think that's because, you know, you add it in bit by bit and mm -hmm. just, stir. and when I first made it, I was like, I don't know, this is a lot of butter. Yeah. And I was like, you don't trust this recipe, Amber. You, did, you didn't Google the recipe to not follow it. So. so let's say someone's making this recipe at home. Is there a Mojo Flow song that you would recommend they jam out to while cooking? Yes, I would recommend that they jam out to Perpetual Conduit of Positivity, uh, which you can currently listen to on Spotify. We released that single in January of this year. So uh, I would jam to that on Spotify and then also I'd watch the video and uh, then just continue to let Spotify take you on that journey. <laughs> That's perfect. That sounds like such a great evening. I hope everyone does that. I hope they try out the recipe, listen to some Mojo Glow and just drift away into positivity. Yes, yes, please do. Well, our Creole shrimp is done. It smells incredible. It looks so beautiful. And I've got myself a little dish here. I've peeled one of my shrimps. I'm going to try it. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's so good. That's crazy delicious. Good recipe, Amber. Thank you. Don't worry, we've got this recipe available for you at WOSU.org slash Kate's Quick Bites. And learn more about Amber and the band at MojoFlowMusic.com. Amber, of course, sings as well as she cooks, so we can't not follow up her recipe with a performance by the band. She says this song is for those of us who are exhausted and maybe looking for an inspirational boost, which, come on, that probably describes all of us these days. She wants us all to know that even when things seem hopeless, we're not alone. Here's Keep Holding On by Mojo Flow.
See more of Mojo Flow and their pre-pandemic visit to the WOSU studios at WOSU.org slash local tunes. Finally tonight, we're going to tell you about moulage. It's the art of injury simulation for the purpose of training emergency response teams. And by injury simulation, we do mean fake burns, flesh wounds, and all manner of bodily damage. Enjoy this story from our friends at PBS in Reno, Nevada. So the stuff I do, injury simulation makeup, can look really gory, but it's all fake. Everything you're about to see is completely fake, fake blood and guts, so enjoy. My name is Lindsay Rucker and I do injury simulation makeup. I own a company called Image Perspectives here out of Carson City, Nevada. Moulage is actually a French term meaning to make the mold of, but in nowadays terms it means to make someone look horribly injured. So it's injury simulation makeup. Image Perspectives was born out of the need for realistic injury simulation makeup uh, back about 32 or more years ago. Uh, my grandmother started the business and she worked for the Nevada Division of Emergency Management and she was the one who put on all the disaster exercises and they were putting together these people that were wearing like this wound on their arm that was just a strap on piece of plastic and it never looked realistic. And so my grandmother said, everybody's not getting any training. They're laughing at these injuries. It's a total joke to them. Let's do something better than this. Let's actually evoke some emotion and get some actual training involved. She was uh, trained in theatrical makeup when she was in high school and beyond. And she got into the blood, guts, and gore stuff and just kind of developed image perspectives. We were the first of its kind. And we have since spawned all of the kind of stuff that's been happening around the moulage industry. There is training involved when a, an actual disaster happens like 9-11. And in order to have our first responders and our emergency personnel go out and not be shell-shocked, for instance, it really helps to kind of de-traumatize and prepare them for what to do if the real thing were to happen. People are realizing that it's worth their while to actually go out and do this moulage and make people look like their realistic injuries are applied to real people instead of just on a piece of paper or a card that says, I'm injured. The other side to making things look as realistic as possible in this moulage business is there's definitely a Halloween kind of theme. I definitely take into play uh, character makeup, making every, anything from Frankenstein to a fantasy little fairy kind of a character or something like that. I would say that my specialty when it comes to doing character makeup and that kind of stuff is definitely on the orient of the blood, guts, and gore. I love zombies. Everybody loves zombies. It's definitely a thing. And I can make a mean zombie. <laughs> I like to do the stuff that is a little bit more in depth and has some some feeling to it that's that's kind of a little creepy. That's kind of my thing. <laughs> The product that I use is called Effects Gel, or Gel Effects, it's the same kind of thing, which is actually a liquid when it's hot and a solid when it's cooled down. When we go to pre-make an injury simulation wound, we will pour out the skin piece, let that solidify over time, maybe about a minute to a day, and then we'll cut out the center of it, make the wound itself in various different ways, depending on the kind of wound you're actually looking for, and we'll apply the wound piece to our person and stage blood and let them go out. So when I do a realistic burn simulation, I'll take the effects gel. While it's warm, I'll be able to scoop it up more or less and then stick it on the skin and do this tapping motion. And then we let that solidify and then we put another layer of effects gel that's a different color, like blood, in the center of that and wipe it clean and looks like a realistic burn. And it really feels like realistic skin. When you put it on and, and you do a really nice skin edge, then you can powder it and it feels just like baby butt smooth. <laughs> it's just like real skin. What I get out of doing my moulage is to know that I'm helping people. I've known, especially from things like 9-11 and disasters that happen around us, we're, I'm very lucky to be a back-end part of that and kind of provoke at least this realism and this feeling of, hey guys, this stuff happens, let's do something about this. And I feel very lucky to be able to be a part of that in, in a holistic kind of a feeling. My main inspiration for my injury simulation stuff is 
definitely my grandmother. Her starting the business 32 years ago inspired everyone around her and obviously myself as growing up because I used to count inventory of bottles of blood when I was like 11 <laughs> and she'd pay me five bucks and it was awesome because I didn't know any better. But growing up with that, my inspiration was my grandmother and my mom. Being able to work with them so closely and grow up with this has definitely been um, very heartfelt and I'm very proud to have been able to do that. That's our show. You can find all of our stories online at WOSU.org, as well as on our free WOSU mobile app. And be sure to give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're closing out the show today with more music by Mojo Flow. For all of us here at WOSU, I'm Kate Quickle. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here next week for more great stories of Columbus creativity. Production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, supporting arts, advancing culture, and connecting the community to artists, events, and classes at columbusmakesart.com. From these contributing sponsors and viewers like you, thank you.